So we're here today, I'm here today again with my great friend and muse, uh, Lee Wilson Smiley, who just, just re most recently was head of the theater and arts theater and uh, dance department at uh, University of Maryland. And now she's an independent uh, voice and acting teacher. And we've been exploring all aspects of that craft. And I'm, you know, I've started out as a kid, my twenties doing a bit of that. So this is a fun reunition, re <laughs> fun reuniting with that. So, hey, Lee, how are you? I'm great, Bill. How are you? Um, you know, last time we talked about the idea that we would go for our 30 minute segments from sort of a piece of writing or a speech or something each week, dig into something. And you, you brought up the Gettysburg Address. What do you, what yeah. Do you yeah. yeah, I love this. I love this right now. And I love uh, because it's not partisan. It's about, uh, it's about, I'm, was that my, I'm sorry, somebody texted me. Um, it, it's not partisan, but it's about, I think, the love we have for our nation and the understanding of history and progress through our nation. And, and right now in this critical time, these words resonate deeply uh, for me and for you, I think. And, um, and I'm wondering how how your audience will feel about this. And what, what I've said to you before is I love rhetorical tools. Um, rhetoric is important. And some of, the, some of the tools in here, which we can discuss after we hear you do it, uh, we can play a little bit with those. Okay, well, let's, let's go at it. I, I, I've yeah. spent a little time on my favorite encyclopedia, Wikipedia. And I, don't want, I won't get into everything I learned, but what I did learn is that and I agree, she, uh, Lincoln did not like to speak extemporaneously. He wrote everything out. Mm -hmm. This went through several drafts before he finally, before he gave this one. And then after it was done, he actually kept polishing the finished version for a bit. And so what we've got today is the address is what, his, what he felt like was what he really wanted to say. So that's a tremendous uh, starting point. The other thing is when he showed up in Gettysburg, he was quite sick and everybody thought he looked just ghastly. And now they think he may have had some sort of minor, minor um, version of smallpox. And consequently, when he gave the speech, he was, he was sad yeah. and he was slow, but then this is sort of a sad, slow speech anyway. So it's, uh, so as usual with this stuff, let's, let me, I've only, I've read this a couple of times, but I haven't done any real work on it because I wanted to start out, read what I read, and then you and I will figure out what's here and yeah. how we can, how we can That's explore it some more. So let me, uh, let me, let me go at the- Take a breath, take a moment. Take a breath, okay. Take a moment and when you're ready, start. Four score and seven years ago, our fathers brought forth on this continent a new nation conceived in liberty and dedicated to the proposition that all men are created equal. Now we are engaged in a great civil war, testing whether that nation or any nation so conceived and so dedicated can long endure. We are met on a great battlefield of that war. We have come to dedicate a portion of that field as a final resting place for those who here gave their lives that that nation might live. It is altogether fitting and proper that we should do this, but in a larger sense, we cannot dedicate, we cannot consecrate, we cannot hollow this ground. The brave men, living and dead, who struggled here, have consecrated it far above our poor power to add or detract. The world will little note nor long remember what we say here, but it can never forget what they did here. It is for us the living, rather, to be dedicated here to the unfinished work which they who fought here have thus far so nobly advanced. 
It is rather for us to be here dedicated to the great task remaining before us that from these honored dead, we take increased devotion to that cause for which they here gave the last full measure of devotion, that we here highly resolve that these dead shall not have died in vain, that this nation under God shall have a new birth of freedom, and that the government of the people, by the people, for the people, shall not perish from the earth. Yeah. 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 So, Bill, when you say this is a sad piece, I'm oh, I do. See this is, I do you. see this as a sad piece right now. Yeah. Well, I I think it's hopeful. I think it's hopeful that we get up, we breathe, we use our voices, and we say, "Let's work towards something better. Let's not let this." this great nation perish from the earth. So it's hope. I think it's hope. And it's a fierce, determined hope. And it's a humble hope also. Um, so I, one of the things I think about with this piece is the rhythm of it. I think it grows. I think it grows in rhythm. And part of it is a repetition that he uses. Part of it is the antithesis that he's written. So for instance, it begins at the beginning with four score and seven years ago. And it goes, the next sentence starts with now. So we're going from history to now. And you as the speaker want to bring people's uh, imagination from back then when this nation was started to right now. And truthfully, we are engaged in a great civil war right now. That's the truth. It's not a great civil war. It's a terrible civil war, but it is a, right now. We're in a place where our nation is very di divided. Um, there's a couple of other, there's many antithesis. Um, uh, we have gathered, uh, we have come to dedicate um, those who gave their lives. Um, okay, uh, halfway down, this world will little note nor long remember what we, what we say here. Um, but we can never forget what they did here. And again, it's, it's about really imaging those two connected thoughts. Uh, well, he saw this, as I understand it, he saw the Civil War as, as restarting, hitting a restart button for the country. And, you know, the, the, the original sin of slavery was something that was much on everybody's mind. And, and one of the things that I've learned a bit is that the, when the Constitution was being written, it called to mind the whole slavery question. And the founding fathers, many of them had a, had a real realization about how wrong it was and, and it changed their views, the 10 years or however long it took to draft that. Um, a lot of them gave up their slaves after that, uh, after that whole uh, constitutional convention. And this was much on Lincoln's mind, um, I think when he said this, because he saw the, the Civil War as uh, uh, giving a fresh start from that start. Mm -hmm. Right, and so he calls it a so great. The then and the now and the and the we and right. the they. Yeah. So do we? I wonder. You, go ahead. I think that the the rhythm at the end has to build. Uh, you have to ride the 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 horse of the of the pace. Oh, we highly resolve that the dead. Blah blah. blah. Now the 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 thing that's so interesting about this is reading it, performing it, is that Lincoln didn't really perform it. I mean, Lincoln was was doing lousy at a very high pitched voice. Mm -hmm. uh, nobody, nobody. The the guy who came before him, Edward Edwards, spoke for two hours, and by the time Lincoln came on, <laughs> most people didn't know that he'd he'd even started when he was finished, and there was no applause, and so he didn't really give a performance. And yet, 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 you know, something like me and you, as we read this, we we need to we need to make those words come alive. 
Right. So I'm yeah, gonna, it's, it's I'm very... gonna drop what he was and think about what we are. Yeah, I think so. I think so. I mean, I, I, as if in the magic, as if of acting, as if you were able to say these words, not then, but now and have them land. So, because I think there is so much truth in this now for us, um, just um, so. So, what's the phrase? As if. So, I'm bringing to this. So, this is the magic now. as if in acting, as yeah. if you are speaking this to our nation right now, and they could hear it. Um, and again with as much humility as Lincoln had in the sense of maybe they'll listen. Well, he says, you know, no one's going to remember these words. And of course we do. We remember these words more than we remember a lot of the dead, I would say at this point in history. So Absolutely. we don't think about that slaughter because it's not in front of us every day. So should I try some text? I think you should try some text and um, what do we want to do here? Uh, use strike up the antithesis a little bit more and really strike up some of the repetition. So the word dead and died is really repeated quite a lot. Um, and that last uh, the, yeah, I would use a lot of the latter of, you know, there's commas in there, but the energy needs to build after each comma. So do you want to begin at the beginning or where do you want to attack this? Yeah, but let me just look at this. Uh, let's start at the end. Um, for It is rather for us to be here dedicated to the uh, great task. Again, he means it when he says great task, like it, it's a great civil war. Uh, remaining before us that from these honored dead, we take increased devotion uh, for which, uh, again, the repetition of devotion uh, that we hear highly resolved that these dead shall not have died. All Use all those sounds in those words. So vowels or consonants or both? Or... Mainly consonants, I think. Okay. Uh, let's focus on that this time. But that last line is that, that this nation, comma, under God, comma, shall have a new birth of freedom, comma, and that the government of the people, comma, by the people, comma, for the people, comma, shall not perish from the earth, to allow each of those thoughts to build mm -hmm. into a, a, a really strong last thought of shall not perish from the earth. And you can, mm -hmm. you can do that with, a, with a, a really standing out each of those words. Okay, let me... Um... It is rather for us to be here dedicated to the great task remaining before us, that from these honored dead we take increased devotion to that cause for which they here gave the last full measure of devotion, that we here highly resolve that these dead shall not have died in vain, that this nation under God shall have a new birth of freedom, and that government of the people, by the people, for the people, shall not perish from the earth. Yes, good, Bill, really good. I want you to do it again. Um, so uh, this nation under God shall have a new birth of freedom, and so you're building that energy, that government of the people, and building the by the people, for the people, blah, blah, blah. Um, I want super, super focus on the D's and the T's. Okay. But I love what you were doing with repetition and uh, the antithesis with all of that. It was really great. So, so work on the consonants. Yes. I, so for, from the first, dedicated, okay. dedicated, dead, okay. not, all that. All right, let me... Let me... It is rather for us to be here dedicated to the great task remaining before us, that from these honored dead, we take increased devotion to that cause for which they here gave the last full measure of devotion, that we here highly resolve that these dead shall not have died in vain, that this nation under God 
shall have a new birth of freedom and that government of the people, by the people, for the people shall not perish from the earth. Just take that shall not perish from the earth again and really hit the T. Hit the T. Shall not. Yes. Okay. Shall not, shall not perish from the earth. Yes. I'm, I'm, I'm struggling a bit with earth. Earth's a big word. <laughs> it is. It, it is. But it, it doesn't sound like you're struggling, Bill. Okay. All right. It, is it, I mean, earth. Earth. No, it's not. It, Shall not perish from the earth. Earth. Yeah. Earth. I mean, the, think of the word earth versus the word world, which he also uses. You, know, you and I have been doing a lot of Shakespeare, which has been a real adventure for me. And one of the things that we've, I've learned about Shakespeare is that time, T-I-M-E, mm -hmm. is at least two syllables, maybe three. And what, what Shakespeare, the good actors do is they take these simple words like time or time and they, 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 bring, it, they bring it out uh, so much to, to really... Uh, there would have been a time for There would have been a time. Yeah. So earth, 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 we ought to have two or three syllables in there. I would, I would try that. Yeah. Okay. Let's so start at the beginning again. Hitting all those consonants, they're really important, particularly the T's and the D's. Um, uh, so, and continuing the work that you're doing with uh, antithesis and repetition. Okay. Um, There's a lovely thing that's happening, Bill, is that uh, you're not pushing your voice in any way. There's actually a lot of your thought and feeling being revealed in your voice, which is what you and I have talked a lot about, about transparency of really feeling you, being able to sense the nuances of your thought and nuances of your feeling. So I'm, I'm hearing that and I love whatever that is that you're doing. Okay. Oh my, <laughs> as if. Four score and seven years ago, our fathers brought forth on this continent a new nation conceived in liberty and dedicated to the proposition that all men are created equal. Now, now, we are engaged in a great civil war testing whether that nation or any nation so conceived and so dedicated can long endure. We are met on a great battlefield of that war. We have come to dedicate a portion of that field as a final resting place for those who here gave their lives that that nation might live. It is altogether fitting and proper that we should do this, but, but, in a larger sense, we cannot dedicate, we cannot consecrate, we cannot hallow this ground. The brave men, living and dead, who struggled here, have consecrated it far above our poor power to add or detract the world will little note nor long remember what we say here, but it can never forget what they did here. It is for us, the living, rather, to be dedicated here to the unfinished work which they who fought here have thus far so nobly advanced. It is rather for us here, dedicated to the great task remaining before us, that from these honored dead we take increased devotion to that cause for which they here gave the last full measure of devotion, that we here highly resolve that these dead shall not have died in vain, that this nation under God shall have a new birth of freedom and that government of the people, by the people, for the people shall not perish from the earth. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, Bill. 
That's nice. Well, that's really nice. Um, I think, uh, yeah, I mean, one of the things that I heard this time that I hadn't been hearing was the um, honored dead um, and the noble men. Well, you know, we go through this with these pieces all the, you know, we've done a lot. And what happens is I go through it a couple of times, and I don't want to bore our audience with doing this 93 times, but, you know, what happens is the more you do it, the more the words sort of um, start working on you. And the thing about Lincoln is Lincoln took a lot of what his rhythms are from the King James Bible. And so I think the two greatest documents ever are the King James Bible, the language, and, uh, and Shakespeare, all of Shakespeare. And you and I have talked about the fact that if you just go with the sounds, the sounds of the words, the meaning emerges. Yes. And yes. so what happens is I keep going through this, the, the sounds start working on me more than trying to intellectualize um, what it is that, uh, what I'm saying. And uh, right, I mean, know. so you, you might want to share Bill with the audience is the fact that vibration actually moves through the body, and it explain, the body, explain, explain that. What is what, what do you mean? So, the great resonator in your body is your bones, and if your muscles are not super tight, if you're not unnecessarily tense then the sound of your voice moves through the bones of your body. And as you become more aware of your voice as a, an instrument per se, um, you begin to feel it through your body. So there's the actual physical vibration moving you and these consonants and these vowels, vowels are very um, direct from the belly to the world and through the channel of your throat. Um, but the consonants begin to really vibrate your body so yes as you repeat these words and as you become more aware of the sounds in the words it, it moves your body not just because there is emotional imagery in this text but also because it's physically moving you and that's what audiences feel too um any anyone in your audience can remember a moment when somebody said something and they felt moved they felt plucked like they were a stradivarius violin so didn't you tell me the story about an actress who was either an english speaker or i think it was an english speaker and she went to do a performance in india yeah it was tina packer what was what, that's what, tell, tell that story again that's interesting so, uh, tina packer had a grant and i can't remember it was a guggenheim or what it was and this is very early in her career after she'd worked with the royal shakespeare company and john Barton and she was, she was doing uh, research and they invited her to do a monologue in a huge stadium. I think she said 10,000 people were there. And so of course she spoke English and she didn't, uh, she said she didn't think many people in the audience spoke English, but she did, uh, I can't remember if she did Juliet or Hermione from Winter's Tale. And she said at the end of it, I think she did Hermione uh, when she, uh, Hermione is pleading for her life in front of her husband, Leontes. And uh, she said at the end of it, she just stopped and there was not one sound from those 10,000 people. They were collectively holding their breath. You could hear a pin drop. They understood from her voice and the feeling and specific sounds in the words, what she had just said, that somebody was pleading for their life. It was, it's phenomenal what we know from the voice. I had a, wow. I had a similar experience of doing this show. We had a fellow on who uh, was a Chinese dissident, and I think he's probably recognizable to most people. He was the one with the, was blind and wore his sunglasses, obviously, for his eyes. And he'd, he'd escaped from China and come here, now lives in the Washington area. I think he's teaching at Catholic, but he's very dedicated to uh, freedom in China, religious freedom in particular. 
And I had him on the show. Of course, you've got somebody who's blind on a TV show and who doesn't speak English, or so he claimed. And so I had an interpreter in from Voice of America, and he sat at the table with us. And our dissident um, started talking, and we, the, he would talk, and then the interpreter would interpret, and he'd talk. But he was so passionate about his subject that after about 10 minutes of talking with him, I no longer felt like I needed the interpreter. It, you, you, could, you could just listen to what he was saying. He didn't understand ex exactly what he was saying, but you knew what he was feeling and you knew what it meant for, for ch the Chinese people. <laughs> it got to one point where I was when another person at the table. I, was, I motioned to her to speak and the interpreter said, well, don't you want to hear the interpretation of, of, uh, of <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, better interpret it so, so we know what it is. But yeah, that, that was the experience and it was quite real. Now, yeah, it, it later turned out that he did speak English pretty well, but he wanted to do the show in Chinese because he wanted to, you know, because this is on YouTube, he wanted to be able to speak directly to the Chinese people um, right. with what he was saying. And so he spoke over the English audience, but, but people paying emotional attention could really get it. So... Yeah. This, you know, coming back to our, we've got just a couple of minutes. Uh, um, you know, it seems like the the imageries in this are uh, are birth, life, and death, and sacrifice. Yeah, he does. He does what every great writer does, which is he brings images that we all share that actually go straight to the heart and to our imagination rather than to our intellectual brain so uh, honored dead we're on this great battlefield so we begin yeah. to picture that battle yeah. um, uh, the that uh, consecration is is a Latin word that wants to go to the brain but but it somehow goes into our heart yeah, it does. It does. It does. Uh, uh, and that repetition, the we and we cannot, we, we cannot, they. So we're getting pictures of, of in, in our minds, and certainly as long as the speaker is, is seeing what he is saying, the audience will get pictures as well. Can, uh, I want to close. I'd love to have you do some of this uh, Maybe the last the last piece. It is rather for us if you could do that. But the, what I want to make a, a a a contemporary reference to this. You know, we talk about this as if it's the greatest piece of writing ever, and everybody knew it at the time. Well, they didn't know it at the time, and evidently, um, the, the this was attacked by his political enemies, and then also attacked by some people in Europe for not being whatever but so even even something like this and for those of us who want to be feel better about the toxic nature of political discourse even the gettysburg address was was attacked by lincoln's political enemies i'm sure i'm and, sure uh, so i guess the lesson is persevere uh, persevere you, exactly there is hope <laughs> there is hope we you and i both think that we don't agree about everything political but we do agree there's hope so would you do the last, would you close us out with the last, would you do this, it's rather for us to be, could you do that? Okay. I'm not. Okay. okay. It is rather for us to be here dedicated to the great task remaining before us, that from these honored dead, we take increased devotion to the cause for which they here gave the last full measure of devotion, that we here highly resolve that these dead shall not have died in vain, that this nation under God shall have a new birth of freedom, and that the government of the people, by the people, for the people, shall not perish from this earth. Beautiful. You're getting, you're getting a lot of yeses and, and raised fists here, here in the studio. We, we love it. Um, it's it's a Henry V. Don't you think it's, it's a yeah, we well, man, we... We few, we... we, uh, we few, yeah. yeah, it is. It's a Henry V speech, and it's, it's uh, I don't know, I love it. 
Well, so. I love you doing it. I love you. I love the work we're doing together. So thanks again, Lee. And we'll talk. I, we'll, 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 between now and then, we'll figure out what the next piece of text is. But thank you. This was, uh, this was a revelation. Thanks. All right, Bill. Thank you. Bye-bye. Yeah. Thanks for listening. Want more? Be sure to subscribe at thebillwaltonshow.com or on iTunes. 